Hello, Natchez. I'm Dan Gibson, mayor of Natchez, coming to you live from the City Hall, Historic City Hall. I'm in the conference room. We have not had our Natchez Renewal Live program for a couple of weeks. Uh, we've had so much going on. Uh, so I'm here to tell you about it. A lot to report on tonight. We're going to talk just a minute to let our viewer list uh, climb, and hopefully people will start watching. Uh, it has been a beautiful day in Natchez, and I actually just arrived back at City Hall from a meeting I had in Oak Hill, one of our beautiful bed and breakfasts here in Natchez. They have actually won international awards as being one of the top NBA in the whole world. And it was really neat to be there and to have a visit with them about tourism, about some other issues. Uh, but what was really neat, I was still the time, we're waiting for for people to start watching before we really get into the uh, program. And what was really neat about uh, meeting with Doug and John there is they were sharing the fact that a lot of uh, local uh, Mississippians are discovering that for the first time under this pandemic time. People aren't finding other places. They're coming to Natchez. And uh, they were hoping someone from uh, Jackson just the other day. I've never been to Natchez from Jackson, Mississippi, just an hour and a half from Natchez Trace there. Never been to Natchez. And they said, it is great to be a tourist in your own backyard. And I thought, you know, that is exactly what we need to be marketing here uh, to everyone in our vicinity. It's a good time to rediscover all the treasures we have right here in Mississippi in our own backyard. And truly, we have treasure here in uh, Natchez. Uh, hello, Jason. Good to see you on Facebook tonight. And uh, we'll get a few other viewers. We're going to be talking about keeping our economy open and uh, the importance of a strong and open economy here in Natchez. We're going to be talking about some of the indicators of economic growth and how the Natchez Renewal is doing. We're going to be talking about our project on the hill, uh, the, the docks project, and the raising of Silver Street. We're going to be talking about uh, what's going on downtown on Franklin Street with loss prevention services and all the progress they're making there at the Regents Bank building. We are also going to be talking about crime and our efforts to uh, make matches a smart, safe city. We're already a safe city, already a smart city, but uh, we're making progress there. We're also tonight we're going to talk about um, some other economic development issues, uh, such as job training and uh, and things that are happening uh, uh, economically that, that we're really excited about. We're also going to talk about some uh, tourism issues and some good news that we've got today. Uh, with regard to Force of the Road and also the the program we had Tuesday night on the Natchez link to the Emancipation Monument in Washington, D.C. So all of that said, I've kind of laid out a little format. I think we'll now just dive into the discussion. I'm going to share a report with you about Natchez, but then we're also going to take your questions, and we'll be on the air for the next 30, 40 minutes. And we're here to uh, report to you. Um, I'm going to start by talking about an open and strong economy and how important it is for us here in Natchez to remain open and to remain strong. So we're probably, you're probably, I know I am, hearing the headlines or hearing the news reports, reading the headlines from all across the country. And uh, COVID-19 has had a resurgence and has really uh, come back with a vengeance in some areas of our country. We are seeing uh, reports now that Washington State, they're closing down. California, they're closing down. Other states, they're having a real problem in the Midwest. Iowa, real bad problem. Just this evening, I talked to a former mayor of Davenport, Iowa. He is telling me some things they're struggling with there. Uh, well, 
the good news is, is that we're doing well in that Adams County. I'm extremely grateful to report that the uh, last uh, report I saw yesterday uh, indicated that we had right 55 active cases, and that's in a county of 30,000 people. Our positivity rate, right at 4%, that's half of our neighbors across the river, and that's about a quarter of the state. A positive rate. And uh, also uh, important to, to note that our economy shows every sign that is continuing to improve. Uh, so uh, whatever we're doing now, let's keep it up. It obviously is working. Here during the pandemic time, when so much of our country and even some parts of our state are struggling, we're doing well here in that. I want to take a minute just to applaud all of the leadership in place here in that Adams County, uh, our supervisors, our uh, our mismanagement operation under the leadership of Mr. Uh, Robert Bradford, uh, and and everything that's being done, not just by our officials, but by our citizens. Obviously, we're doing the right thing. Let's keep it up. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, this virus is going to go away. Uh, the vaccine, they're even saying we're getting closer and closer now to have the vaccine. But this is the thing that we don't want to go away, and that is our local businesses, our residents, our B&B and lodging operations, our small businesses, uh, especially these small businesses that have been around for generations. You know, if you look at the statistics from COVID, you will see that yes, nationally, we've hit a quarter million uh, on our death rate. That's what's been reported. But here in Natchez, a very low number, and, uh, and that's something to be very grateful for. But you know, when they look back on COVID, they're going to have to look not at just the human lives that were lost, but the businesses, the marriages, the families, the schools, the churches, livelihoods, life savings, retirement accounts. And we don't need that here in Texas. In fact, we don't need that here in our country. Yes, one thing, to fight a virus with all that we've got. But if we sacrifice our economy in doing so, then we will have far worse a problem on our hands. Poverty kills, homelessness, people who lose their livelihoods, their jobs, their homes to either foreclosure or eviction. Is this really what we want our country? I can tell you no. And so we as Americans and we as Nazis was, must remain strong. And our economy must remain open. And so as mayor of Nazis, I will fight and resist any effort, be it nationally or on the state level, to close our economy. Our economy will remain open and we will as we have for many many years remain open with the spirit of hospitality to all who want to visit now as we do this let's do it safe let's be smart and i know if you hate the man well you're in good company i don't know of anyone who likes the man but let's just do what we have to do Let's get through this and let's keep our economy strong. Now, let's talk about our strong economy for a minute. Let's talk about the economy of Natchez because I'm ready for some good news. I had lunch with a realtor this week who's been around Natchez a long time. And I asked her to share some reports with me. This is exciting. She shared a report with me that indicated that the inventory of available real estate in Texas is down one third 
from where it was four months ago. We had almost 300 properties on the market four months ago. We're down now a little over 200. That's four months time. Do you know how exciting that is? Do you know what a great economic indicator that is? That people are no longer just lining up to sell their houses, but rather people are lining up to buy them. And that shows a great turnaround already in Natchez. Another great economic indicator, I, I have a goal for City Hall to pull some numbers for me. I wanted to see the number of new business permits. And you know that number was over 20. And in fact, jobs associated with those new business permits, right at 150. Now, to be in a pandemic here and to see real estate numbers this strong, a high real estate market, and to see this many new businesses opening and this many new jobs being created, that is stellar performance for us. Like that. And it absolutely defies the logic of what's going on in the other parts of the state and in other parts of our country. Let me also point this out. I asked to look at the number of new building permits. And uh, this would be new construction in Nashville. And that number was over 150. The dollar amount right at $4 million in four months. And so if that's an indication that our economy is rebounding, I don't know what is. Now, let me tell you about some other exciting things. Uh, just a few weeks ago, toured the old region bank building with uh, uh, the loss prevention folks. They're ready to open. Uh, so we're excited about that. A couple hundred new jobs coming there. But then right next door, about to start progress on tearing down the old empty grocery store and tearing up that old parking lot, which is my school, and then a place a new parking lot coming, and it will be a beautiful parking facility for prevention. That's progress. Uh, last week, we met with the guys who are uh, in the final stage of renovating Dunleaf, a $1 billion, a $1 billion renovation about to be completed. And the place will reopen in January. 56 new jobs. Those aren't even in the job account yet. That's exciting. And we also just reached out local real estate projects who are appraising now for the city of Natchez, the old Margaret Martin School Building. Why are they doing this? Because we have declared a surplus and we're about to sell it to Dunn. It will be a major renovation project, and we just can't wait to see what happens at Market Garden. They're going to renovate the auditorium. Now, this may be a little ways down the road. The guy finished Dunley first, but uh, they're going to put in a spa. They're going to put in a biking cooking school. And, uh, wow, just so many things on the drawing board. So uh, while we're talking about economic development, let me mention this. An interesting visit to Delta Energy last Thursday. One of our employers out in the park. And uh, Delta Energy actually takes old tire rubber and they recycle it in an environmentally friendly way. And they supply raw product to major tire manufacturers around the country to produce Tire. Uh, it was exciting to see the operation and see what they're doing there. But it was also worse to find out that they have five, six open positions because they haven't been able to find the trained workforce needed here in that to fill those positions. If we're going to grow our economy, we've got to make sure that we have a well educated and trained workforce. And so Yesterday, had an exciting meeting. I met Mr. Fred Butcher, the superintendent of Natchez Adams School District. The assistant superintendent, uh, his name is Dan McDonald, and also met with Mr. Cleveland Moore, who is their director of their tech program. 
we are excited to see that job training already taking place in Natchez, Adams County, at the Island Center, at the hospital, at Covina, at all, at the Wood Job Center. But Natchez deserves more. So we are now discussing what it will take to build the kind of job training center that we all need and deserve here in Natchez. We also are working with our lobbyists, and we'll have a meeting with them tomorrow to see what we need to do to lobby for the funds necessary to build job training here in Natchez. But not only the funds, but the permissions. You see, it was years back that Colin here in Natchez lost an excellent commercial driver's license program a CDL program they had going, and we are now working to get it restored. And so it's important that we go for the low hanging fruit first. And being that Natchez is home to Jordan Carriers, one of the largest trucking operations in our region, it only makes sense that we build a good CDL program here in Natchez. Now, in addition to all of that, in speaking of job training, uh, we are looking at other outside the box ideas uh, to really encourage uh, better education here in that. And I'm excited that our school district is already putting in place some outside the box strategies. And we as the city are going to partner with them and the county in helping make this happen. Not only will we be the partners, Colin, Alcorn, our Chamber of Commerce, Nash's Inc., Film Nash's, putting in classes for the film industry, and also neighboring counties. We're already talking to Jefferson County about getting involved in this. So just stay tuned. Some good things are about to happen with regard to job training. Um, I want to talk about tourism. We had uh, meetings today dedicated to tourism. Uh, we have had meetings this week and last week. Uh, the most exciting meetings that we've had lately with regard to tourism is what we're going to do to welcome the goats back. During pandemic times, as you know, cruises have been stopped and the cruise ships the Natchez have not been able to, to come. Well, about a month ago, in this very room, in the conference room at City Hall, we uh, had a discussion. We launched a very ambitious project, three docks for three years. Since then, we have had discussions with all three major cruise companies, Viking, American Cruise Lines, and American Queen Delta Queen. In addition to that, we've had discussions with all of the partners under the hill, business owners, the landowner, and we have also had meetings now with Volker Engineering, an engineering firm that has worked in the past on strategies to alleviate flooding concerns on Silver Street under the hill. Well, just today, we had Volker Engineering in person in a distance meeting at the convention center with a number of participants not only there at the meeting, but also participating virtually. We had not only our engineers, but we had all three cruise lines in there. We also had uh, our city attorney. We had Natchez. We had Visit Natchez. Mr. Warren Ruther from New Orleans is helping us negotiate with these cruise lines. We had various other parties there, our front rider. And, Sean, and what resulted today was an aggressive plan with everyone at the table to raise the street in its lowest area by eight feet, starting at Magnolia Grill and going forward. And it will bring Silver Street to the level needed to make sure it doesn't flood again, going by the historic flood level. Of 2011. In 2011, the river reached 62 feet. 
In the years since, it has flooded numerous times. Last year, Silver Street was closed half of the year because of flood conditions. Well, we now are working on a plan to make flood a thing of the past. We have far too much to offer to not have a great river flood that doesn't flood. Great businesses thriving and open under the hill and also beautiful docks to receive visitors as they arrive in Natchez, be it the Viking cruise ship, American cruise lines, or the American Queen Delta Queen. What's really exciting is to see the skin in the game that these cruise companies now are already pledging. Viking has already done. This was started under the former administration, under Mayor Crittenell and the Board of Aldermen during that time. Viking is already working on their plan to construct their own dock to be ready by mid-2022. Couldn't be more exciting. Well, American Cruise Lines, American Queen, they're now the day. And when I mentioned the former mayor of Davenport, Iowa, earlier, and we were discussing challenges in Iowa with regard to COVID. Well, the reason we were having a conversation literally 10 minutes before this program tonight is because he is no longer the mayor of Davenport. He now is on the team at American Cruise Line, and he wanted to convey to me some exciting news, and that is the CEO of American has just within the last 30 minutes, uh, you're getting the news first here, uh, committed not only to build their dock at their expense, but to also contribute financially to the raising of Silver Street. They want it done quickly. They want to make sure they put their skin in the game so that everyone else is challenged to put their skin in the game too. So what's exciting about this is to see everyone coming together and a project that recently would have seemed impossible is now about to happen. Uh, so just imagine uh, when we have these new docking facilities, as many as 12 cruise ships arriving in Natchez every week. And also because Silver Street won't flood anymore, all of that low land can be now back and it can be developed our new commercial real estate. Uh, this is a game changer. Uh, this, this actually will create more jobs than we can imagine. Uh, the increased cruise activity, and not to mention that, the increased business under the hill, and it will be more of a friendly environment because these businesses won't have to worry about closing due to high water. Now, that's exciting news. Let me give you other exciting news. Um, we just got a text. I haven't even had time to respond to it. I get about 100 text messages a day or more, sometimes 150. It's counting, right? I actually kind of keep count of it because I have to return them every night or early morning. That's what I'm doing is trying to return text messages, emails, and, and Facebook messages. And I've gotten behind lately. By the way, if you send me a message on Facebook, I'm sorry. I'm just a little glutted out right now, trying to get them returned. Uh, phone calls, too. We just stay so busy, it's hard to return the calls because I'm in meetings constantly doing things like this. I wanted to share this. Our lobbyist, uh, former Congressman Greg Hartman, texted me just a couple hours ago. I haven't even been able to respond to his text yet, but I did have time to read it. Uh, last week, uh, as if this news wasn't exciting enough. Last week, we got com confirmation that Forks of the Road had made the final cut, uh, the list provided to Congress for funding uh, by the Department of Interior for funding our projects next year. This would pave the way for the Forks of the Road project. Uh, Forks of the Road Historic Slave Market District to now become part of the Natchez National Historical Park. Well, um, Greg informed me just a couple hours ago that uh, not only has it made the list, but the amount of the funding request has been more than done. And so it shows that the work of our lot 
lobbyists and others, myself and our friend, Honorable Ricky Gray, President of the Board of Supervisors, working so hard on this. Uh, we've managed to get bipartisan money, all of our Mississippi congressional de uh, delegation. And I would say that our chances are upward 90% that this funding will come through in 2021 and the forks of the road uh, district will proceed. This will allow us to buy the land necessary to create that beautiful historic site that is so great needed. It will add so much to tourism here in Natchez because Natchez will be home to the only such historic site in the entire park system of the United States of America. So we are excited about that project. I want to tell you what else we're excited about. We had a program Tuesday night. So when we, when we talk tourism, we want to be talking about, about tourism, tourism for everyone, everyone. A, a diverse, diverse tourism. And, uh, and so, so Tuesday, Tuesday night we had a program about this amazing link between Natchez and Washington, D.C. In 1876, the Emancipation Monument to Abraham Lincoln was dedicated in Lincoln Circle. Frederick Scott was the orator that day. President Ulysses S. Grant was in attendance along with a host of national dignitaries of the day. That monument, dedicated in 1876, be, became the only monument to Lincoln for the next 46 years. It was much later, in 1922, when the Lincoln Memorial was dedicated. So if you were a tourist going to Washington during that time period, it is very likely that a trip to the Lincoln Monument, the Emancipation Monument in Lincoln Circle, would be on your list. Well, what people don't realize is that that monument wouldn't be there were it not for Natchez, Mississippi. Not only that, it wouldn't be there were it not for the U.S. colored troops stationed here in Natchez, Mississippi. You see, this monument was the brainchild of a former slave. And from that, a movement began across the country for this monument to be erected and entirely paid for by emancipated citizens of the United States. $18,000 and change was raised. And of that 18,000 that was raised, do you know that over 16,000 of it came from the U.S. colored troops right here in Natchez? Many of them for a lengthy period of time dedicated over half of their monthly wage toward this important project. And the project shows Lincoln giving encouragement to a freed slave who is about to spring forth in great productivity as an emancipated citizen of the United States. Charles Scott was the former slave who one day after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln set his plan in motion. Very dear General John Davidson over the uh, U.S. Hunger troops here in Athens at Fort McPherson is the one who proudly delivered all of this money to the federal government uh, when it was made possible for this monument to be uh, erected. Well, what we are about to do is we are going to put in place, we're going to put in place a plan to have a permanent exhibit created that would tell the story, this amazing story, right here in Natchez. We'd like that exhibit to be a high profile, much seen exhibit. And I personally would love to see it at the visitor center. Uh, we also want to work at helping NAPAC, our wonderful museum on Main Street, to incorporate this story into its permanent collections as well. So those are some exciting tourism things to note. But 
Uh, I'm continuing to talk, waiting on questions, just giving a report. I think we've been going about 30 minutes. So much to tell about. Uh, while we're, uh, Brian, oh, thank you so much. Uh, you're commenting on uh, my enthusiasm. I appreciate that. This train will continue gaining momentum. And I tell you, Brian, we're, we're watching history right here in Natchez as it unfolds before our eyes. I appreciate your support. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Jason, we appreciate you and the work you've done. Y'all means all. That's something we could talk about all in itself. Uh, all of the money that's been raised during this pandemic is truly amazing. It really is. Um, I get off topic so easily, but let me say this. I want to talk about recreation. We are struggling in Natchez, Adams County with recreation. Uh, we spent three hours in a meeting this week. Uh, this was on Tuesday morning, pouring over the financials dealing with our city's recreation budget. And we know that our city parks need renewal. And we also know that money is limited. Uh, we actually have a great thing going at our golf course. Uh, and that golf course brings in the lion's share of our recreation budget, uh, over half a million. I don't know what we do without a golf course. Um, we have a great tennis program, but we've got to do more with our overall parks. If you've been to North Natchez Park, it's pitiful to see. If you've been lately to Concord Park, if you've been to any of these other parks, you will see playground equipment that is in need of, of renewal. You will see fences that don't look good. You'll see faded out equipment and you'll see broken down buildings and you'll see uh, pavement, potholes. We've got to address it and we've got to get started. Um, obviously, you start with the low hanging fruit. We need more revenue. We need more revenue and a good place for it. A good source is golf. We just hosted the first ever Natchez Open. And here during a pandemic, we had a fantastic turnout. Why? Because people are looking for outdoor activity close by and golf tournaments are in demand and on the rise. And thanks to Greg Brooking, we have a fantastic golf course at Duncan Park. But we have a deplorable looking clubhouse. That clubhouse must be restored. If we could restore that clubhouse, it would increase the activity and the volume of golf tournaments and golf being played. And that means revenue. And so... We are looking at creative options and we've already met with an architect to see how we could go about restoring the old clubhouse. We need a beautiful facility, one that will greet golfers in such a grand way that they, as soon as they leave, will be planning a return visit. And when they come to Natchez, they're staying in our hotels, they're eating in our restaurants, they're spending money or their wives, their spouses are spending money in our shops, they're taking our tours. It's a win-win for Natchez. Another area of low-hanging fruit, there's a lot of money that can come through hosting tennis tournaments. We need to do more with our tennis. We've got a great facility. We need to work on it, build on it. And if we could attract more tennis tournaments, again, a COVID friendly activity that's outdoors, very popular in this day and time, it could be very good for Natchez. Let's talk about our ball fields. One of the top areas 
of recreational tourism in America today is the money being spent going to ball tournaments. Uh, my son is now 26, but I remember when he was growing up, I was his t-ball coach. I can tell you, parents, many of you listening tonight, you're spending a lot of money going to ball tournaments. And we've got to do more in Natchez with our ball fields so that we can be hosting those tournaments here. In addition to that, recreational tourism is becoming a big deal. And we need to be looking into having a sports and wellness center here in Natchez. We've talked about it for years. It's time to do it. And recreation is also an economic development tool because it attracts people to your community. So we are beginning the process of discussing a plan for a sports and wellness center. All of this will require more money. And we're looking at creative ways, various options available to us to get the money through grants, through other tax initiatives. Uh, you know, there are a number of programs uh, available to us uh, uh, through economic development, through creative incentive programs, uh, financing programs, short-term financing. And you know, one thing that we can look forward to is that the convention center uh, before this term is up will be paid for, and that will give us more opportunity. So we're doing some serious uh, looking around at our recreational needs and we'll have more to report on that soon. Let's talk about crime. We had a meeting this week of our Safe City Task Force. We have just appointed this task force, Alderwoman Sarah Carter Smith as chairwoman our, of our police committee is chairing this task force. We're expecting great things to come from it. We're discussing ways to address crime, to address certain areas of our city where crime seems to be happening more than in others looking at cameras, looking at lighting, and also looking at things that our police need to effectively fight crime, to fight gangs, to fight drugs. And also our police committee and our board of aldermen are for a new police chief. So a lot's being done in that area. Do we have any questions? Anything that's come through? Everybody's good so far. All right, great. Well, we're ha we're just covering a lot of topics. I want to just tell you this. We'll since we haven't had a lot of questions, we'll get to a place where we sum this up. But uh, it's a great job being mayor, and I love being your mayor. Uh, but it's also a tough job. And it starts early and every day it goes late. And uh, if you're trying to reach out to me, just please keep trying. I'm sorry that right now I'm sitting on about 50 unanswered text messages from just this afternoon. Um, I try to answer them throughout the day, but it's tough. I also want to tell you, too, I'm sitting on a number of messages, calls that I've got to return. And obviously, when you're in so many meetings during a day, back to back, day after day, you can't get everything answered. But we're doing our best. Wednesday, I had every email caught up and I'm now behind a jillion. Uh, so just be patient with me. Uh, your information, your comments, your needs are very important to me. But the easiest way to get my ear is just to call City Hall and speak to my assistant, Pam Patterson, and get an appointment with me. Be happy to meet with you. But also, if you have a concern that involves your neighborhood, your street, sidewalk, uh, uh, a trash a sanitation matter, um, don't hesitate to reach out to your alderman, your alderwoman. That's what they're there for. Uh, put them to work. Uh, get Get good use out of them because they're there to serve you as am I. Uh, but in addition to that, 
we encourage you to watch our meetings, watch these broadcasts, share them with others. A lot of people in Natchez, I think, are misinformed or underinformed because they're just not taking advantage of our virtual component. But all, all of our meetings are being streamed live. Tuesday night's board meeting will be available live here on Facebook and here and also on YouTube. And so uh, watch these programs, stay informed. A lot of things are happening. Uh, this is truly a historic time in Natchez, uh, a time of great opportunity, a time of great renewal. Well, that's about all that we have time for tonight. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning in, for listening. I want to thank you for your love and support of Natchez. We truly are blessed to call Natchez our home. Have a great night. May God bless you. And we'll look forward to talking to you again soon.